Welcome, beloved of God, to this service of worship, word and sacrament on this, the fourth Sunday in Advent. And I do pray that we will all be richly blessed as we allow God's Spirit to minister to us during this time. The birthdays in the parish are as follows. The 22nd of December, Molisi Zwane. On the 24th of December, Kali Athanasopoulos and Moloko Selepe. We do wish you all a truly blessed celebration and that the year ahead will be fun filled with uh, God's rich and abundant blessings. I 
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the Collect for the fourth Sunday of Ed Advent. God of Elizabeth and Mary, make our hearts leap with joy, fill our mouths with songs of praise, and make us ready to welcome the Christ in our midst, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The first reading is taken from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 11 and verse 16. King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord kept him safe from all his enemies. Then the king said to the prophet Nathan, Here I am, living in a house built of cedar, but God's covenant box is kept in a tent. Nathan answered, Do whatever you have in mind, because the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David that I say to him, You are not the one to build a temple for me to live in. From the time I rescued the people of Israel from Egypt until now, I have never lived in a temple. I have travelled around living in a tent. In all my travelling with the people of Israel, I never asked any of the leaders that I appointed why they had not built me a temple made of cedar. So tell my servant David that I, the Lord Almighty, say to him, I took you from looking after sheep in the fields and made you the ruler of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have defeated all your enemies as you advanced. I will make you as famous as the greatest leaders in the world. 
I've chosen a place for my people Israel and have settled them there where they will live without being oppressed any more. Ever since they entered this land, they have been attacked by violent people, but this will not happen again. I promise to keep you safe from all your enemies and to give you descendants. You will always have descendants and I will make your kingdom last forever. Your dynasty will never end. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 89 verses 1 to 4 and 19 to 26. Lord, I will sing forever of your loving kindnesses. My mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness throughout all generations. I have said of your loving kindness that it is built forever. You have established your faithfulness in the heavens. The Lord said, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn an oath to my servant David. I will establish your line forever and build up your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful one, I have set a youth above a warrior. I have exalted a young man out of the people. I have found my servant David and anointed him with my holy oil. My hand shall uphold him, and my arm shall strengthen him. No enemy shall deceive him, no evil man shall hurt him. I will crush his adversaries before him, and strike down those that hate him. My faithfulness and loving kindness shall be with him, and through my name his head shall be lifted high. I will set the hand of his dominion upon the western sea, and his right hand shall stretch to the streams of Mesopotamia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelations of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey in him, to the only wise God be glory for ever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. Luke, beginning to read at the 26th verse. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the Gospel of Christ. Welcome everybody to our fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. 
was Advent several years ago and a Sunday school teacher was hoping to counter all the commercial Christmas frenzy swirling about her children and to teach them what the season was all about. So she sat down at the kitchen table with her young child in the middle of December and they began the project of assembling a cardboard cutout nativity scene. Stable, manger, baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph, sheep, cows, shepherds and the magi. Fold on the dotted line, the direction said. Place tab A in slot B, etc. Easier read than done, of course, and within a few minutes it was a disaster. Nothing worked as intended. Nothing looked like the picture on the box. The mom had all but taken over, but she didn't fare any better than her four year old partner. The kitchen table was littered with torn, bent, spineless figures just wilting over. Pieces were frayed and taped together. The mother in her frustration was close to clearing the table and trashing the whole thing. And the little boy was less than impressed. So surveying, so surveying the scene on the table, the four-year-old, who was supposed to be learning the real meaning of Christmas, that Jesus is God's son, said, So, Mommy? Where is God in this mess? A poignant Christmas memory, which also remains the quintessential Advent question. Where exactly is God in all this mess? There is something profoundly moving, I think, about God's visitation to Mary's life and her call to bear the Christ child into the world. In verse 28 of our Gospel reading from Luke, the angel Gabriel says to Mary, Greetings, favoured one. It is beautiful that Mary should be highly favoured by God. What a wonderful young woman she must have been to be highly favoured. What an incredible calling on her life to bear the Saviour of the world, to be chosen for that ministry and to be blessed by God in that way. And yet, as it is with us, so it was with Mary, that her life became a study of contrasts. In verse 38 of our reading, Mary said to the angel Gabriel, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. But from that moment onwards, it seemed like her life had descended into chaos. Firstly, Mary's marriage was a mess. We all know the story. Mary had become pregnant during the period of betrothal and under the law of the Torah, she faced divorce at the very least and possibly even being stoned or killed for her perceived behavior. Mary had become a disgrace to the family and an embarrassment to Joseph, and he considered a quick and quiet annulment of the betrothal as a result. Her marriage was a mess. Secondly, Mary's finances were in a mess. Again, we know the story. In Luke 2, we are told about the census that Caesar Augustus had ordered and how Mary and Joseph had to return to Bethlehem to be registered. But when they arrived, there was no room for them to stay anywhere. I'm pretty sure a room could have been found if they had enough cash to pay for it. But Joseph was a carpenter. Not much money in that, I suppose. So their financial mess resulted in Mary giving birth in the worst possible conditions, and she had to lay her baby in the animal's feeding trough. Thirdly, her community was in a mess. Mary was a good Jewish woman, growing up under the tyranny of an oppressive military dictatorship. The Romans were very much in control. The ordering of a census had proved that. But even their own leaders, like King Herod, were tyrants who ruled over society with a rod of iron. Not so many years previously, there had been a civil uprising, a revolt against the Romans, and even now, in Mary's day, the world was a dangerous place in which to bring a child. The angel Gabriel had said, Greetings, highly favoured one. The calling was beautiful, but the reality seemed to be so different. Her marriage was in a mess. Her finances were in a mess. Her community was in a mess. I wonder if there are times when we feel like Mary. Perhaps today is one of those times. We look at our lives and we see chaos and mess. Relationships are not how we would like them to be. Perhaps there's financial stress or employment is causing anxiety. 
Perhaps we feel trapped and unable to escape from our day-to-day -day pressures. Perhaps the ongoing pandemic is affecting your financial stability through possible job loss or affecting your emotional stability due to prolonged stress and anxiety. We may look at our lives and all we see is mess. Sometimes it seems such a stark contrast to the hopes and dreams we once held and we may wonder where God is in all this mess. But of course, something else was happening in the story about Mary. Yes, her life was a mess, but there was an emerging miracle in that mess. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, was emerging from her. And whilst she considered the external circumstances and could only see mess, God was looking through all that and witnessing the birth of a miracle. For Mary, the miracle was being obscured by the mess. But that did not mean that the miracle was any less real. I wonder if there's a miracle in your mess, in my mess. Maybe it is obscured right now, but if we are able to look at the circumstances of our lives differently, perhaps we may get a glimpse, just a glimpse, of the miracle emerging. I believe in miracles. Though I rarely see or even expect instantaneous ones, instead, I believe that miracles emerge. They don't come fully grown. They need to be nurtured and safeguarded in the womb of our being. Isn't that what Mary had to do? The miracle was in the mess. But for nine months, she had to carry it in secret. And even when people saw the signs of the miracle growing within her, and heaped scorn and abuse on her and misunderstood the miracle within. She still kept it secret and loved the miracle and guarded it with her own being. And even when she gave birth to the miracle, she had to care for it and nurture it and guard it, first by carefully wrapping it and feeding it, and then by escaping to Egypt with it, and then by returning to a safe haven, Galilee, away from Nazareth. And as we read again in Luke 2.52, Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. And we reflect differently on that verse this time. We think just how much of that developmental growth was a result of the loving care of Mary and the way in which she nurtured and reared the miracle day after day, year after year. I believe in miracles. And I believe there is a miracle in every mess, but it needs to be sought out carefully. We need to allow it time to emerge. and We need to nurture it and safeguard it and allow it to grow in our lives. If I asked you, what is the mess in your life? You may be able to give me a quick and clear answer almost without thinking about it. If I asked you, what is the miracle emerging from the mess? Could you answer that? Have you seen it? Are you able to nurture that miracle at the moment? Our lives are a study of contrasts, just like Mary's. There is often a set of external circumstances that are, that are a complete mess. But the inner reality may well be an emerging miracle, and we need to be able to see both at the same time. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, Greetings, highly favoured one. The word favoured has its Greek roots in the idea that God is bestowing his grace on us. It is God's grace that, whatever mess our lives may be at the present time, a miracle is emerging from that. It is an act of grace that even though those circumstances that may seem beyond redemption can not only be redeemed, but can even be blessed and can be the soil in which a beautiful miracle will grow. And that, of course, is the incredible nature of the nativity of Jesus, that a miracle emerges from chaos and in God's good providence, it is not that the miracle emerges despite the chaos, but that the chaos itself is part of the emerging miracle. The nativity of Jesus, the birth of the Saviour of the world, occurs in a chaotic mess so that order can be brought to the whole of creation 
and all things can be redeemed and fulfill their original destiny. Who would have dreamt that salvation for the world would be wrought through such a messy act as incarnation into a broken world? And yet it does. A miracle emerges out of the chaos because it is the right thing. You see, God does not somehow transcend the chaos and mess of our lives and work a miracle in us despite that chaos and mess. Instead, he uses the chaos and mess to give birth to the miracle. Your chaos, your mess, is the womb for God's miracle. The miracle will emerge from the mess because, it's the, because it, this is the right place at the right time for the right thing. If we look at our lives from a purely human perspective, we may only see mess. But if we try to discern the hand of God on us, we may just see a miracle emerging from the mess. Sometimes we need to sift through the rubble and the debris of bad decisions, inappropriate actions and wrong choices. But as we do that, so the miracle can be observed. So, if it seems hard to live into the joy of Christmas this year because of the heavy burdens you bear, or the messiness of your life or your family, or the pain of being physically distanced from those you love, know this. God does not wait. God does not wait until the, ready, the world is ready, or for a perfect time, or for perfect peace. God does not wait for pandemics to end. God does not wait for all the messes to be tidied up. God does not wait because Jesus is being born where people need him most. God makes God's home in the messiest of places, a stable, in the messiest of times, under the control of the Roman Empire, and with the most ordinary of people, a teenage girl and her fiancé and the shepherds. And in those moments in our lives when we wonder where God is in all of our mess, remember the reassuring, gentle words of Angel Gabriel, The Lord is with you. Shalom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the whole meaning of Christmas can be explained in one little four-letter word, love. You sent your gift of pure love to us that first Christmas. Love descended from heaven to be born of a virgin. Love lay in the scratchy hay of a manger in a meagre barn in Bethlehem. All of your love, God, was robed in the delicate skin of a baby and wrapped in swaddling clothes. This final week of Advent helps us to reflect on the magnitude of love that was made manifest in Jesus. The greatest gift of all came that first Christmas. It wasn't wrapped in a beautiful package and set under a decorated tree. The greatest gift came wrapped in the flesh of baby Jesus and laid in the rough wood of a manger. Our perfect gift would later be rewrapped in the scars of our sin and nailed to the rugged wood of a cross on Calvary, all because of love. Father, this final week of Advent, fill our hearts and minds with the significance of that truth. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to send Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Someday walk on water Mary, did you know That your baby boy Would save our sons and daughters Did you know That your baby boy Has come to make you new 
This child that you've delivered Will soon deliver you Mary, did you know That your baby boy Will give sight to a blind man Did you know That your baby boy Will calm the storm with his hand Did you know That your baby boy Has walked where angels trod When you've kissed your little baby Then you've kissed the face of Those of you who are going to be participating in the Holy Eucharist, uh, please prepare your bread and the wine as we begin our service with the taking of the bread and the wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, God our Maker. Out of nothing you called all worlds to be, and still you draw the universe to its fulfilment. Dawn and evening celebrate your glory, till time shall be no more. In Christ your Son, the life of heaven and earth were joined, sealing the promise of a new creation, given, yet still to come. Taught by your Spirit, we who bear your threefold likeness look for the city of peace, 
in whose, in whose light we are transfigured and the earth is transformed. As children of your redeeming purpose, who await the coming of your Son, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father. In Jesus you showed us yourself. Our hope is built on him, the first, the last, the living one. Obedient even to accepting death, he opened the gate of glory and calls us now to share the life of heaven. Before he was given up to suffering and death, a light with the vision of a feast that heralded a kingdom yet to come. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup and again offered you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We obey your Son's command, we recall Christ's blessed passion and death, we celebrate Christ's glorious resurrection and ascension, we look for the coming of Christ's kingdom. Made one with Christ, we offer you these gifts, and with them we offer ourselves as a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine. By the Spirit's life-giving power, may they be for us the body and blood of your Son, and kindled by the fire of your love, may we be renewed for the service of your kingdom. Make us grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter our true eternal home where, with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and the holy ancestors of every generation, we will worship you in glory everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, now and forever, world without end. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. 
Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. Not to testify that we are righteous, but that we sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Not because we are strong, but because we need strength. Not because we have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in our frailty and sin, we stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ broken for us. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us always. Amen.
So dear friends, go in the light of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Jesus, my.